Hello and welcome to the garden. So I'm in the greenhouse today. We're between storms again and yeah, I'm not looking forward to the next few days. We've moved all of the lightweight stuff out of the way and hopefully there won't be any damage. I'm a little bit nervous about it. We've closed the vents on the greenhouses and on the back wall here, I have put some duct tape over a hole in the glass because the last thing you want is to let the wind inside the greenhouse with nowhere to go. That will just blow the glass out. So the storm is going to come from there, I think. And yeah, that hole wasn't good. Anyway, by the time this video goes up, the storm will have been long gone. So I do hope you didn't have any damage. It's really very unpleasant and of course there are lots of things in the garden that are a little bit prone to damage greenhouses polytunnels netting and so on so i hope you get away with it and you haven't had any trouble from this storm anyway today i am sowing some more alliums now i've already sown my first batch of onions from seed include some spring onions and i've got some little pots of those in here they're doing rather nicely. Of course, they've only recently come up and they're only just sat on the bench here. So they're not enjoying any great warmth. Daytime temperatures are good, of course, but nighttime they get a bit chilly. Um, they don't care, though. They are perfectly hardy. I could put them outside. They wouldn't grow quite as quickly, but they're perfectly happy with cold temperatures, especially after they've germinated. So today I've got to get the leeks done. Now, I know quite a few gardeners have already got their leeks away, and that is something that you can sow just as early as the onions. But on the other hand, it doesn't have to be sown quite as early because these are not going to crop in the summer. They're going to crop in the autumn and through the winter. So I want these for full-size leeks, uh, not, not baby leeks or anything like that. And I really don't need the crop until much later in the year. If they arrived in the summer, I wouldn't be able to use them. It would be far too early. So I, I don't need small leeks for the summer or anything like that. I just want main crop leeks for late autumn and, and into winter. As we, as we sort of transition from summer dishes and the, the tomatoes and peppers are going over and we move into sort of autumn fare. So, yeah. Now is probably a good time to sow them. I don't think it would be a problem sowing these all the way through March, actually. But I do like to get them done towards the end of February. And I'm going back this year to Musselburgh. I grew a different leek last year, and I'm sure it wasn't the leek's fault. It was undoubtedly mine. I did leave them too late before I transplanted them. And, and anyway, they were, they were a bit rubbish. Probably the worst leeks I've ever grown. So... I do hope I do a little bit better this year, but this is our old favourite and this one has never let us down. Right, let me get on with it. So these leeks are going to go into this, this old sort of mushroom tray or whatever this was in a previous life. There's a reasonable depth here and they, they do want a reasonable depth. You can give them more soil if you want, but they don't need more than this, I don't think. Um, I've just lined this with some card just to stop all this loose compost washing out the bottom straight away. And I filled this with a compost blend that's maybe a little bit more substantial than uh, my usual seed sowing mix, just because these leeks are going to be in here a lot longer. Um, it's still full of bits of junk like most of the compost I've got lying around here. It really is unimpressive stuff. Anyway, I want to just press that down just gently. I don't really want to compact this too much, but yeah, that, that'd be fine. And then I'm going to give this a really good soaking. I do like to water very thoroughly to begin with. And then of course, I'm a little bit more cautious, but I do like to properly hydrate the compost before I sow. Right, 
Right, that is absolutely fine. I'll just spread that out slightly better. Yeah. Right, a good boggy mess there. So these seeds will get nicely hydrated. I don't know how many I've got in here. Undoubtedly plenty. I will sow this entire packet, I expect, and I want to get them nicely distributed across the surface of the compost here. I can always thin these a little bit and of course I can always prick some out into other trays to give them a bit more room. I often do transplant the leeks twice. They don't mind transplanting, it's one of those that is very happy to be moved. Right, that is great. Now on the top I'd like some finer textured material, none of this lumpy junk. And it's not a bad idea to sieve the soil if you're, if you need to be, oh, weed in there, um, if you need to be pricking out or transplanting, roots are going to come out of sieved soil a lot easier. Another weed. You see I don't, I don't want these bits. Actually most of this is yeah, it's not bad. Most of that is okay. It's just it's just clumping together a little bit. But anyway, that's a nice fine mix on the top. Now, I'm not going to press that down too much. Just it's in good contact with the seed. That's absolutely fine. I will probably give that just to drop more water on the top and then that will be it for quite a while I would think. So occasionally I do have a habit of compacting the soil just a little bit too much so sometimes it's very sensible to firm the soil in. If you're sowing into cell trays especially where the cells are small it's a good idea to pack the compost in there so that so that each plant has a reasonable amount of compost to be working with, especially in some of the smaller cell trays where there's really very little room in them. Very often my seed sowing mix is fairly light and unless I pack it in, it, you really don't get an awful lot in some of these smaller cells, small pots. However, it's not necessarily a good idea to compact that surface layer one of the regular viewers and commenters on my own channel, uh, his tip is to sort of tap the sides of the pots and it's something you may have seen me do on some previous videos. It, it just sort of settles the soil nicely and it leaves it a little bit looser and, 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 and fluffy on the top so that instead of being compacted, it's nicely aerated and as a consequence, less likely perhaps to get a bit stagnant, grow those algaes on the surface or, or anything like that. So it's a top tip from Alan at the Dawn Chorus Plot. Now he was kind enough to mention me in one of his recent videos and of course I haven't been on YouTube for so long, just over a year now and, and it's always challenging to build up the channel and he's in a similar sort of place to me and it's always great when somebody gives you a mention it really does help the channel and I thought I would return the favor now it's very likely that many of you who are watching my channel will already be familiar with Alan's Dawn Chorus plot but if you haven't been there it's well worth checking out Alan's got a, a nice large plot, very nicely laid out, and his gardening is thoughtful and meticulous, which is something that appeals to me. Everything is done very orderly and very nicely, so he's got some very good content on there, and he also has the very best 
theme tune. So I defy anybody not to have their toe tapping and a smile on their face just as soon as they fire up one of Alan's videos. Anyway, back on with the alliums. So I will put that tray of leeks in one of the propagators. The leek seed will germinate if I just leave it here on the bench. That's not a problem, but it will germinate more quickly and potentially more reliably if I put this somewhere a little bit warmer. And if you can maybe keep it indoors, you don't need to have a propagator out here. But if you've, if you've got a space indoors where you can put a tray of leeks, they will be very happy and should germinate nice and quickly in, in sort of room temperature. So the next one is potentially a little bit interesting, although this is some saved seed and I'm not necessarily expecting this to be viable. Um, I'm a little bit doubtful about that. I'm going to sow it and see what happens anyway. I don't really know what this is, to be honest. It's some kind of perennial onion. It doesn't seem to divide too readily, but it, I mean, it comes back year after year. We got this plant from some friends in Finland. Like I say, I, I, I can't really say exactly what sort of allium this is, but it's, it's something a bit onion-like. And I'm going to have a go at sowing some of this saved seed because I've only got a, a couple of those. Uh, we bought them back some years ago. They, 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 they do come back year after year, but they haven't multiplied very well. I haven't cared for them well enough, I expect. But if any of this seed does germinate, then... I will multiply the stock up a bit and maybe start a patch of these. Right, what I'll do is just, I think, blow off some of this fluff. That was silly, it's everywhere. Right, now I can see that there's actually quite a bit of seed in here and uh, yeah, I don't need a high percentage of success with this. Just a few would be nice. So I'm going to sow those, I think, in a seed tray because I don't have high hopes and, and then I can prick out anything that does come through. Well, I've still got a few of the, the old husks there, but it doesn't matter. I can just... Sprinkle that on the surface of this seed tray now. And I will try and sprinkle that somewhat evenly. There is quite a lot of seed here. Um, maybe I'll do two trays. I've got a second one here. Although that is looking a bit, that's looking a bit rough. I don't know what I'll do if I have all of these come up. But I think that the most likely outcome is that none of these germinate. That's all rubbish. Right, I will just get a bit of compost over the top of those. And again, these will go on a mild heat. They'll germinate more reliably with a little bit of warmth if they're going to germinate at all. All right, that's, that's plenty. Right, excellent. I'd already watered those trays earlier because that compost was a little bit dry. So these are good to go. I will label these. <laughs> I don't need to label the leeks. I'm only growing one variety, but I will label these. I don't know what they are, but 
I shall just call it onion and a question mark. Anyway, my next sewing is some more onions. Now, I think I already have enough seed sown onions to fill my main onion bed. I hope so. Um, I've got three varieties. I've got Rose de Roscoff, probably my favorite onion. Um, up there near the top, I've got some Tropia Rossa, a beautiful onion from Calabria. Really very tasty indeed. Maybe a little bit more strongly flavored than the uh, Rose de Roscoff, but both of those are, are really great onions. I've also got Rossolunga di Firenze, the long red of Florence. That's another very nice onion. I think that one is perhaps, of those three, that one is perhaps better used cooked rather than, rather than raw. Um, I think the other two have slightly better qualities for use raw. Anyway, I had germination trouble with one year old onion seed and I had to buy some fresh seed and re-sow. That was a little bit frustrating, but onion seed is one of those that does decline fairly quickly. And as a consequence, I've decided I don't want to use old onion seed in the future. So I will buy fresh seed for next season. Of course, that leaves me with quite a bit of spare seed. So I don't really need more, let's say, main crop onions, but I would like to use the seed rather than waste it. And of course, most onions you can sow in a thick clump take them when they're young, use them as spring onions. It's nothing wrong with that at all. Pretty much any onion will do perfectly well as a spring onion or for just for some, just for some green shoots. Another option, this is something I did last year, is to sow in a rather large clump. Now, I have multi-sown some of the onions, but I'm only looking there at small clumps of maybe three or four at the most, because when there's just sort of three or four onions in the clump, I'm gonna get some reasonable sized bulbs. Actually, we also use quite a few smaller bulbs. Very often the shallots serve that purpose, but I do like some smaller onion bulbs. It's, it's handy, of course, if you don't need a whole big fat onion in whatever you're making, but they also roast very nicely. So. Last year I had some spare Roscoff seed and I sowed those in, in thick clumps. It was a little bit later in the season and of course being in a thick clump and, and not thinning that out at all, um, they produced smaller bulbs. So you know, nice, nice pickled onion size. And that's exactly what I did with them actually. Most of those were turned into pickled onions and they are very delicious prepared that way. So I thought I would use up some of this spare seed and just sow some more cells, but with a much larger cluster of seed. And, and then I can take them when they're, when they're sort of spring onion size, or I can leave them to produce smaller bulbs and they, they, should, they should grow fine in clumps of 10 or 12, something like that. Um, I have used, I've used all of my slightly smaller trays up, I think. So I'm going to sew in these 28 cell trays. The cells are pretty big on that, but that does mean they're well suited to a large clump and they can sit in there until I've planted up the main onion bed. And I know if I've got, if I've got any space in there or I have to go hunting for more space. So I've got some more Tropia Rossa seed and I've got the rest of my Roscoff seed and I'm going to fill, I think, one tray of each and we'll see how they grow throughout the season and I'll just use them whenever I want to. I don't need to wait for big bulbs with these. Right, so I will fill these trays I'm back on a slightly lighter seed sowing mix here. Just press that in a little bit. It's a bit fluffy, this stuff. But again, I'm not, I'm not trying to really compact that, just 
If I don't do that, it will slump as soon as I water it. Now I will give that a good drop of water. You can see that settled just a little bit, but it hasn't really slumped in those cells. So that's exactly what I want. And I'll just make a little bit of a depression there to sew in. Quite a broad depression. I'm going to sew quite a clump of seed there. So I'll start with the Tropia Rossa and I'll see how far this seed will go. A nice pinch in each one of these. These can be good sized clumps. I've still got some spare seed. Those are big old clusters. I don't want to sow them any more thickly than that, I don't think. Um, we'll see. You never know. I might just sow them as spring onions or something throughout the year. It's no good getting seed in such huge quantities if it isn't going to keep. It's nice to have generously filled seed packets, but it doesn't help if you have got to use it all up within a year. Okay, not pressing that down too much. I'd better put a label on that. One more. I don't have nearly as much of the Roscoff seed, so it may, yeah, this isn't going to go so far. I'll sow these in slightly smaller groups. Um, maybe, maybe I'll do the rest of this tray with the Tropia. That's good, I get to use all of this seed after all. I've just got two more little jobs to do today. One is to prick out some more of the peppers. I did a whole video on pricking out the young pepper plants, so I won't show that in this video. The other little job is just to thin out some of the brassicas. So I recently sowed this rather small cell tray and I put two or three seeds in each cell. I can see that I've got one here with four in, a little bit heavy handed. But some of these have started to come up, not all of them, but the Komatsuna is all up. The, what's that? That's Calabrese is on its way. And I think I can see at least one of the Tuscan Kale. So that's encouraging. I'm sure the others will be along shortly. What I want to do is just pick out all but one of these while they're still quite young before it causes too much disturbance. Chunky digits do not help for this task, so a little pair of tweezers is ideal. And he's not quite in the middle of the cell, but he's the nicest looking seedling. See, they've still got a nice little bit of root on them. They are very young, but I don't want them to get crowded in here, start getting in each other's way. At this stage, they can be slipped out with relatively little disturbance of their neighbours. Uh, what have I got there? Is that decent? Yeah, it's probably all right. 
They look a little bit pale, but that's because they've only just got up to the light. Yeah. Um, that one can come out. I will have to go over these several times, of course, over the next few days or a week or two as they start to germinate. That's not bad. Now having done that, I always do like to give them a little drop of water. It's not because they're dry as such, but it does help to settle the soil back around the roots. So just that little bit of pricking out to do now and then I'm going to get indoors and hunker down and hide away from the coming storm. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now. <laughs>